Hello everyone, boys and girls, men, women, and children of all ages. It is I, everyone's favorite jack of all trades, with the foul mouth, Commander Urban. And uh, before I begin, I want to say thank you to all the new subscribers. We're nearly at 500 subscribers, so yay. Let's go ahead and keep it up. Let's see if we can get another 500 more and get over a thousand. Cause I do this for you guys. So I mean, the more the more subscribers and subscriptions I get, the more I'll be doing this kind of shit. But I also want to say thank you to the longtime viewers and followers. One for you guys. I wouldn't be doing all this shit I'm doing now. So anywho, yes. I've got a bit of Titanic news. Now, some of you might already know this, but I just learned about this not too long ago because I was looking at pictures of the new Trumpeter Titanic. What it's going to look like, you know, all the stuff, what it's going to look like, you know, seeing what the box going to look like and seeing all the different uh, things apart, sure sprues and on one sprue it had the propellers and of course you had your two outer three bladed wing screws and you have your four bladed center screw but then there was another screw too that looked like the same diameter as the four bladed center screw but it was three bladed I'm thinking what the fuck a three bladed screw I didn't know what the hell that was at first but then I came across a um, an article on Encyclopedia Titanica, which I'm I'm a member of Encyclopedia Titanica. If you want to look for me, it's Comet Urban. Comet Urban on Encyclopedia Titanica. Anywho, it was written by Olympic class liner historian Mark Shernside, and it was about the Titanic's propellers, more specifically her center her center propeller, which is the one here that was powered by the massive forward ahead Parsons designed exhaust turbine. He had discovered an old Harlan and Wolf document book and it was uh, a build book for propellers for ships and it had you know the hull numbers, you know the, the job numbers and it had the propellers and the descriptions. Now when it came to uh, Halls 400 and Halls 401 for their two outer screws they were the same the same diameter, same pitch, same everything but it was the, four, the, the center propeller that was different. On the Olympic it said it listed by 400 said blades on center propeller four so for years and years people believe that was the way the Titanic was set up as well but in the document where it says 401 it talks about her you know Titanic center propeller for the number of blades it don't say four it says three I'm thinking what the so they are, are so are they telling me is this document telling us that the Titanic center propeller may not even been four bladed all this time the Titanic may have had a three bladed propeller pushing her through the water along with her two three bladed outer screws instead of the four bladed propeller because for years and years there has been this one picture that shows the back end of an Olympic class liner you know with the two big gargantuan wing screws and the center forward head propeller which was four bladed if if they're saying it's fucking true that picture isn't titanic that picture was olympic because if it is true titanic's center propeller or the turbine propeller was three bladed not four bladed 
and I read the document, the document makes perfect sense. If that's the case, Harl and Wolf and White Star were trying to see which configuration was more, um, you know, more economical, because they said during the refit of 1912 and 1913, the Olympic also received a three-bladed center screw, and she had that on her until about 1919 when she had an overhaul done. Her post, you know, post Great War refit, post World War One refit. When she was converted to burn oil and stuff, they re in, reinstalled a four-bladed center screw on Olympic. So that means that the three-bladed screw wasn't as economical and performed as well as the four-bladed screw originally did. I'm thinking what White Star and Harlan and Wolf were trying to do. We're trying to test see which propelled which setup was better. But because Titanic only survived not even one whole voyage, they didn't get the test data like they were hoping for. So they had to fit Olympic with the propeller and test her that way, I guess. But, I mean, are we even sure? There's only one way to truly find out if the Titanic has a three-bladed screw or not. And that's to go down to the wreck and somehow either A or either one dig all the mud and shit away from the area of the third propeller the, the center propeller and look at it that way or two do what they did for the bow section of the ship when they were looking at the damage you know under the mud you know they were scanning the mud using sonar to see through the mud sonar around the stern of the ship and see if you can pick up a propeller because we can see the wing screws. They're up out of the mud. We know where they're at. We see them. You can see them on the wreck. It's just that screw alone you can't see. So if you can shoot sonar into the mud and actually see if the propeller either has four or three blades. If the Titanic has four blades, she was set up exactly like her sister Olympic. But if she has three blades, it it just shows that the this old document from Harlan and Wolf was telling the truth when they outfitted the the Queen of the Ocean as she had been dubbed uh, with a three bladed center screw. But the only way to really truly find out is to actually either a dig up the mud around the propeller and look that way or sonar the fucking mud and see if you can pick up an image of a propeller. That's the only way to really truly find out. But the Titanic does have a three-bladed propeller. Holy fuck. My mind has been mind raped. Everything I knew about the propulsion of the Titanic is wrong. And I should probably re, re research that. So yeah. Titanic may have a center propeller that was not four-bladed, but three-bladed. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I will get back with you. And as always, if you're new to the channel and you like what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Become part of the Commodore's crew. And until next time, this is the Commodore Urban saying have smooth seas and clear skies. Happy sailing with you and God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.